Hey everybody, this is Nick Mayhew, three-time gold medalist and three-time world record holder, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are listening to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. I am glad I'm not in New York right now. I I, I don't want to be dealing with the humidity out there, but I'm going to tell you, I'm currently in Las Vegas, finishing up working on some projects out here, doing my live interviews here. Big shout out to my team out in Manchester, UK for making all the greatness happen here on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Uh, I think, what, 108? We've been 111, 113, and I'm going to tell you, I normally can handle heat. Glad it's dry heat. But boy, this weather, I've been having to do my walks, my mile, two-mile walk slash run late in the evening because, no, that sun is a killer. But on a good note, we're getting hydrated. We've got a lot of things coming up on Let Me Tell You What Lady T Catherine with Catherine and Swain and Company is going to be back very soon. She is on vacation. We've got Alicia Pazzoni with Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni uh, this Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. A new show with her. Tune in, check the schedule, go to power985.com for more. You can download the iOS or Android app. Tune in on Alexa. We stream live on Live Radio FM, streamitter.com, Streama, and many others. 200 ca- countries and counting. I, I'm very, very uh, grateful for our listeners, supporters, those who love the shows that we offer, the information. Once again, we do not do fluff media. It's all about keeping it organic, real, and allowing the narrative and the content about the stars that we interview from health and fitness to acting, producing, musicians, um, across the board, even fashion designers. Uh, We welcome everyone. So, you know, go to the power985.com, click the bottom tick in the right-hand side, send us a message, send some information over to our team. You can contact us at contact at power985.com. So, We are not going to take any more time. I know why you're all here. You heard the word. It's out. The whistle's been blown, and you all came running. We've got Austin Aaron. He's an actor, and you best know him. uh, Playing former Lakers big man Mark Landsberger in a new hit HBO series, Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty, Season two, you can look forward to that. We're going to find out more from Aaron of what's happening with season two, how many episodes, if he even knows how many episodes we're in. We want more of Aaron. Uh, He's also known for 13 Reasons Why. Uh, We're going to find out more about that, the difference, and also uh, the transition between these two shows. Aaron, welcome to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco. You're here. Thanks for having me. That was a great intro. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, you know, we had the opportunity to talk beforehand. And I want to thank everyone for being patient, uh, for hanging in there. Uh, we like to get uh, the talent settled in and, and just to go over certain things before we come on live. So uh, thank you for waiting that minute or two. What's happening with you? Bring us up to speed. Now that season one is over with and done, we've got season two to look forward to, right? Yes, yeah. Um, we season one came out in March time, and uh, yeah, I, I think we were releasing weekly on HBO, and it finished around uh, first week of May, and then uh, yeah, we just got renewed for season two back in April, and yeah, just been down here. We've been tra- basketball training every day with our 
uh, phenomenal basketball trainer, Don Ravin. And uh, yeah, just getting getting ready. We're going to start filming in about a month or so. And uh, yeah, get this thing rolling. So season two should be coming out sometime next year. But um, yeah, super, super, super excited about it. One of the biggest things I'm going to say to you, and and you're an incredible uh you know, with your look, you just look like you would be an attorney, uh, somebody very, very <laughs> powerful. But uh, when we look more into it and see your Instagram and everything, you're really fit. So th- these basketball, you know, trainings must be doing you well, even better. I'm assuming out like not even being in a gym, like how's, how's this broken down? Yeah, it's, it's so much fun, but uh, yeah, they want me to lose around 20 pounds for season two, just because you know, I, I played football at UC Berkeley up north, so I'm, a, you know, a football tight end type body um, originally. So it's to get into sh- that basketball shape is a is a whole different ball game. So yeah, we're, you know, the five, you know, main cast basketball guys. We're all on meal plans and uh, yeah, training every day for, you know, three to four hours with uh, with Edon, and then um, yeah, going to Warner Brothers and then getting more training there. So. Basically, just trying to lose as much weight to look good uh, when we have shirtless scenes or, uh, you know, throughout basketball um, on the show. But, uh, yeah, it's it's fun to to eat healthy again. I've never – I haven't eaten healthy since, like, college football, and that wasn't all that healthy. So, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, – it's, it's, it's a good time. What is the type of food you eat, honestly? I know you said, you know, you had eaten healthy, you're eating healthy again. Three hours worth of training – what is that? Are we looking at no oil, no carbs, reduced fat? What is the style like? Yeah, so we have um, a guy named Chris Lockwood who's just this incredibly talented, um, smart nutritionist um, that we have a part of our, our team. And he's got us on this thing called Zen Diet. So it's, yeah, it's minimal carbs. It's low, low sodium, um, small portions, um, a lot of high protein fish and uh turkey and uh basically everything that the magic mike guys were on to get those like shredded abs and everything that's what that's what we're eating so nothing that you really want to taste it's it's very bland foods but uh it gets the job done i've already lost you know eight to ten pounds and it's been i don't know a month of really getting after it so um yeah it's it's my wife likes it too i guess she thinks i'm in a little bit better shape. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, uh, no, like intense burgers or pizza or any of that, except for like one day a week, we get a cheat day, which is really exciting. Would you go back? Or are you looking forward to that burger and those fries? Hell yeah. I, oh man. I had a <laughs> burger last Sunday and it was the greatest thing ever from cheesecake factory. So, and it makes those really like high and trans saturated fat, foods taste so much better when you're used to eating like you know bland fish and broccoli every day Mm -hmm. so um yeah it makes you really crave those foods well i'm here on your instagram right now i wanted to take a look see what your uh recent updated physique looks like i'm looking at the april 15th post really how much i mean you seem to be a solid man a solid guy (laughs) and i would say Is it realistic? Now, we're not going to go too deep into health, but I just, I'm looking at, you know, we all know where people's state of minds are, um, how a lot is starting to come out, uh, where bodybuilders are finally from men and women, especially men, it used to be taboo, about sharing body dysmorphia. Um, You are a incredible human being with a great sense and sensibility and spirit about you. Have you made it very clear, at least to yourself, that within this training and what you're doing, that you not only are emotionally and mentally going to accept and embrace who you are, but also at the same time, pay very close attention to your mental health so that, you know, even post-filming, you're able to still love everything about yourself, even when you go back to that pizza and those burgers and everything else, and you may not be having that eight or six pack anymore. Wow. That's a, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, um, I, I was on a show previous to this called 13 reasons why on uh, Netflix for 
two to three years. And um, so we dealt with some very, very intense issues and a lot, lot about anxiety, depression. I, I went through a lot of anxiety, you know, mainly first two years in college when I was playing football every day on the team and just realized that I hated the game and I wanted to give it up. And I always had a dream about being an actor. So that's actually what got me into acting is just hating football at the next level and realizing I wasn't as good as some of the other guys too. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's tough. I, I mean, I've never dealt with body dysmorphia, of it, but I know so many close friends that have. And um, yeah, it, it, it affects you and it affects your mind when you're not eating you know, healthy and just eat, putting a bunch of crap in your body. So, um, yeah, I, I can't even imagine, especially you got to take care of your body when you're in the off season, especially as an actor, when you're not, you know, 99% of actors are not working at the time. So, um, that's really when you got to take care of your bodies when you're in, you know, in the off season, when you're not filming every day and, you know, your mind is going to go to, Oh, my, you know, my men play this industry. There's, uh, could be using my talent doing something else so that's really when you got to take care of your body and make sure your your mind and your um and your body are at their best i guess but uh except you know i ate a lot of burgers in the off season too so i'm not the best to talk about it but, <laughs> but uh yeah eat healthy it makes you feel good i've i've, I've never eaten this healthy in the past month or two months and mm -hmm. it's like to my anxiety's gone like plummeted gone way down so really? um it really really helps oh big time so are you saying because here's the thing i've tried a lot of stuff um i've tried vegan um yeah I, you know i'm a positive type blood so i usually eat yeah. to my blood type so i can do fish and vegetables what would you recommend and i'm asking you this personally when we think of Zen diet and everything else, do you think that it could overall help me? And before you answer, the reason why I'm asking is because I've reached a point in my life to where I used to be a 28 waist. Now I'm like between a 31 and 32, but I never yeah. thought, and I'm going to be honest, it messes with my head because now at my age, you're, as you know, your bones and everything change. So I actually widen out in my upper chest part in my ribs yep. and I'm just very different in a way. So I'm thinking to myself, can I realistically and in a very healthy way, Aaron, reduce the body fat to maybe slim down slightly? I've also been told by a dietitian you want to look and go by your clothes size because you will lose or reduce inches faster than pounds. So could this work for a person that, that basically kind of wants to get back to what they're used to with their body, or is this just too extreme, this Zen diet? <laughs> We're on a pretty extreme um, diet right now, but, I mean, it, it takes out a lot of sodium. It takes out all trans saturated fats and really just simplifies your diet as much as possible. And, you know, like I said, bland fish and chickens and high proteins. And we're also taking a bunch of like supplements as well. Um, so what, one thing I've helped big time is um, I used to, you know, pop like ibuprofen all the time before training and um, after practice and everything, just cause you get so sore from college football and, and even from last year um, when we started training and everything. But um big thing that um, our nutritionist has said is these uh, fatty fish oils supplements. I think it's like 2,000 milligrams or whatever. We've started to take those. And it totally reduces your inflammation and has basically the same effect as, as an ibuprofen or an Advil. So, really? um, yeah, it's been I've, – I've started taking those. And then with our multivitamins and everything, it's it's – I've noticed a huge difference, but yeah, no, take out as much. So eat as bland as possible. And then it's going to really make, like I said, make you want to crave those, um, you know, the good things, but also don't like totally cut it out completely. Cause that's not realistic. And, um, so yeah, I, I, whatever works for you, but, um, you know, definitely cutting out the sodium and the, the trans fat and the saturated fat, that'll definitely help and make you feel a little bit better. And, um, and then also including with a lot of cardio and not like high intensity, like physical, um, you know, weights and everything, but cardio is just crucial for losing weight. What part, 
and we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the next topic. Um, what part do you, do you know of, or that's about this that help reduce the anxiety? Is it because it's bland? Is it because of the sodium reduction? Um, let's see. Honestly, a big part is you, you, you sleep better because you're not, anytime I eat bad, like I eat a burger, I eat pizza or whatever, I do not sleep well that night. And then it's, you know, dinner, lunch, whatever. Um, but when I'm eating healthy and I stick to our Zen diet, that's what we're supposed to stick to. I just sleep like a baby. So, um, sleep is crucial for, you know, the next day and feeling good and everything. But, um, yeah, no, that, and then I, I think the main part of, you know, my reduced anxiety ever since we started the diet is that I'm moving constantly. So not so much from the, well, the diet's helping like crazy too, but the fact that I've realized my body needs to move. That's I got COVID, I think a month ago or something. And I didn't move for like five days and my anxiety was really intense. Cause I'm like, okay, your body needs to move. Your mind needs to move. And, um, that, that I found that helps me a lot. So just constant, I, I got this actually mini little trampoline in, in our house, me and my wife's house. And we just, I jump on that thing and we watch, <laughs> you know, yeah. basketball, football, or, uh, you know, the office, uh, Ted Lasso or whatever. And I, I will just hop on this trampoline because, and it, it has made so much of a difference. So not a, not a brand partnership or anything or a influencer thing, but I, I absolutely love a mini trampoline and I highly recommend it for anyone who has anxiety. I was chuckling because I was thinking to myself, you're six foot one. Uh, yeah. You definitely no, are six five. <laughs> oh, you're six five. Yeah. All right. So I, 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 I can end up chuckling even more because it's like you, I'm sure you're probably like, whoa, to see you in person. Like you, you're larger than life. And I mean that um, through your spirit and through your smile and just the way you hold yourself. It's just very strong. And, uh, you know, it's almost like you, you stand and like the, the photos you sent over to us, like, it's like, is your spine straight? It's like, you just know, or you give off this impression that you know yourself and your body so well. So the idea of you (laughs) jumping on a trampoline and, and doing all of that, it's like, you're, you're tapping into the kid that's in you and doing something very different. (laughs) And it hits. So rebounding on a trampoline, it actually has about the same effect as running does with your whole body and your cardiovascular system. And it, it hits every single cell in your body when you're jumping on that thing. And my favorite part is like, you absolutely cannot frown on a trampoline. I I just (laughs) like jumping on a trampoline. That was just my best thing over the pandemic is I would just hop on that thing because it couldn't really leave the house at all. And like I said, watch your favorite shows and you just run through them and you're getting amazing exercise. And like I said, I, I found myself, I'm like, wait, I am not frowning while on this thing and I just feel so much happier. So anyone dealing with any anxiety, depression by a trampoline, it will all be, no, it won't be gone, but it'll help a big time. And get a poster of, uh, you know, of you and put that up and just look at it with your <laughs> smile and, and you'll be sure to be on there at least a half hour. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, bachelor's degree in sociology. Tell us more about that and how are you utilizing your degree in your career? How am I utilizing? <laughs> I mean, I'm an actor, so probably not a ton. But I mean, no, um, you know, sociology, I absolutely love that major, not only because I'm horrible at math and we didn't really have a whole lot of math for sociology. Uh, we wrote a lot of papers, but um it's the study about humans communicate with each other. And I think that's so crucial for acting is, you know, people focus so much on the acting, but they don't focus on being a great actor. I like to say is, you know, interacting with others and bringing other people up and um, helping them realize their goals too, and help them be better actors. So um, yeah, I think a lot of actors, they focus on, you know, just the craft and just acting, which is phenomenal. you got to have talent as well, but you also got to be, a great professional and do your job and, you know, bring others up because 90% of acting is just hanging out backstage and um, yeah, just enjoying each other's company and helping them out and um, helping them grow their careers as well. So um, yeah, sociology helped me, you know, interact with others and, 
um, really bring them up. And, and I, I think it, it's helped big time, even though I'm not, I don't have like a social based career or whatever. I, you know, I think it's helped like crazy. When we think about you on that hit series, 13 reasons why, you know, it's a drama thriller and now yeah. winning time, the rise of the Lakers dynasty, obviously they're two highly different platforms and in the, the narrative of what they're about. What have you found or learned about yourself, Austin, uh, from having starred on 13 Reasons Why to now being on the rise of the Lakers dynasty? Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, 13 Reasons Why I started. It was supposed to be one line on one of the episodes. Um, I said, quiet freaks for an episode in season two. And uh, production like what I did. And they're like, hey, we heard you can play uh, football. And I just came off, you know, college football and everything. I was like, oh, of course. So uh, they were like, okay, we wanted you to be the quarterback for an episode uh, at the end of season two. So I uh, did that. And then I got a call from my agent about two months later after season two wrapped. They're like, hey, they actually want to have you uh, audition, audition for season three and kind of see what your acting talent is. So I went in there, did, you know, a few monologues and, um, you know, improv and everything. And then found out a few months later that, uh, hey, we're writing you a character on the show. You're going to be Luke Holiday. You're going to be in all the episodes for season three and then uh, all the episodes for season four, it turned out. So yeah, they, they kind of just wrote me a character on the show and I didn't really know what I was doing to be honest. And I, you know, I had acting coaches after that and started to develop a craft and everything. But I think a big thing I learned from that and in winning time is, um, you know, just be a good person, be not even be nice. I mean, of course be nice, but just be yourself. And I think people, you respond to that when they can tell that you're being genuine and not trying to be someone you're not. It sounds really cliche, but, uh, you know, producers, directors, um, you name it, they want to, they want to work with people that they like to be around. So, um, yeah, no, don't treat anyone any differently from, you know, the custodians or people setting up the set or, are you know crafty and everything treat them the same as your eps or your directors and um yeah i think good things happen when you're when you're nice to people so and yeah that's that's my uh my two cents i guess we cannot miss by saying congratulations to your marriage to uh kristen kiki aaron and uh yes beautiful wedding <laughs> Thank you. you're welcome beautiful wedding the photos the uh people exclusive that you you got you know recognized for uh you know you and Kristen with your wedding it's 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 glamorous but it's it reminds me not maybe a little bit of old Hollywood but it almost has like a southern charm to it there was something very magical to where uh, when I was looking more into your feature into people it was very different it what it's not Hollywood it's it, it was a it's a real re wedding with real people um, showing real love. It was almost as though when looking at the the content, um, it's almost as if you guys forgot that there were, was a camera there. Oh, yeah, no, it was, I mean, it was seriously the most magical day of our lives. We were, we were college sweethearts. She played, or she was the cheerleading captain at Cal. I played football, so nice and cliche for you. But uh, yeah, we had, been together five years, actually four years. And over the pandemic, I'm like, okay, if we can handle each other in a 750 square foot apartment for a year, like just stuck in this thing. I'm like, let's just get married. So I, I didn't get, <laughs> I proposed to her. And then, yeah, um, a year later we got married in my hometown in Napa, um, this beautiful vineyard. Um, like, and I'm a small town kid. She's a small town kid. She's from Merced. So in California. So we, it was just, beautiful all we're both super family oriented so it was just all our closest friends and family together and like literally nothing went wrong on the day i thought something was going to go wrong but it was 75 degrees at the end of november which just does not happen so i mean it was perfect and um yeah I'm, we're getting our uh little wedding like video back in a week so i'm super hyped about that but uh yeah it was it was perfect and yeah we didn't we didn't <laughs> I really know anyone else was there. It was just about us, though. And when she came out, 
you know, walking down with her dad, I was just bawling the whole time. You don't want to see some of those pictures because I am just absolutely crying like a baby. But uh, yeah, it was it was magical. I highly recommend getting married to your best friend. Now, you're not going stir crazy and feeling too trapped in a 700 square foot apartment, are you? Oh, no, we got we got cats. So they they make it super interesting. We got a one cat named Tigger and the other named Winnie, and they just are obsessed with us and follow us everywhere. And no, oh, that's another thing for anxiety is get some cats because they will be right by your side for everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, it, I'm going to say this, and I don't mean this uh, in BS. I truly believe you and Kristen will do very well, you know, not only as parents to your cats, but I really believe you're going to make great parents to children if you guys ever decide to have any. Oh, uh, <laughs> her mom, every time um, you know, they see a kid walking around, they're like, we want one of those. Cause they're <laughs> so, yeah, we're uh, we're probably about two, three years away from a kid, but we definitely want to be parents because we spoil the absolute hell out of our two cats. And uh, every day I, before I go to training, my cat just yells at me, just meow, 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 wanting <laughs> treats. And I give it to him because I, I will. But, yeah, we can't. We can't wait to be parents one day because we're going to, if we spoil our cats this much, I can't even imagine what we're going to do to a full baby. (laughs) Yeah. And definitely remember it's a human being. So, um, yeah, humans without some sort of structure and, um, uh, I don't know whether you want to call it rules or what, um, you don't want to have to suffer the consequences of an unruly child. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, we got to definitely be the yeah my my wife is more uh type a like oh do this do this so uh-huh. she'll be uh i she'll i guess be the hard ass and i'll be the <laughs> hey you guys can have chocolate <laughs> but i'm sure she'll forgive you more often than not oh yeah no that's marriage tell us about uh you are a co-founder we were looking at coop is it coopla Grapes or couple of grapes, couple of grapes. Okay. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So that was a fun little project. We, uh, over the, let's see, 2017 or no, no, this was, uh, this was last year, two years ago when there was very intense fires in Napa and, um, a lot of the different, you know, wineries were getting super affected by it. They were either having their grapes totally burned or, their entire wineries burned down. So um, I had a you know good following from 13 Reasons Why on social media, a decent following. So I wanted to you know help some of these wineries in my hometown, you know get their get their wines out there and kind of get people to talk about them and um, you know know that they were there that were affected by the fires because they were just totally devastated at the time. So um, yeah, me and my wife just started making these little little videos on Instagram where we would you know, taste some of their, their wines and everything and say are just horrible wine analysis. And, um, yeah, and people, people enjoyed them. They, they so we started to get different wineries reaching out like, Hey, we would love to, you, you to know, make a video of you guys tasting our wine. So, um, and so then I started bringing on, you know, some of my celebrity friends and, uh, you know, that are actors or af- professional athletes, whatever. And, get them and their audiences to taste the wine and do like Instagram lives and everything. So we made, yeah, we made this whole, you know, Instagram page where we would just do bad wine tastings and talk about tannins and granulated sugar. And we had no idea what was going on, but we just wanted to, you know, support these different wineries that were, uh, you know, really affected during tough fire year um, in in 2019. So, uh, yeah, people loved our little, little banter back and forth with me and my wife. So yeah, we started a couple of grapes and yeah, eventually want to make our own wine, um, under that label. We're actually talking to a a, a winery right now about doing that, but, um, yeah, that's, that's probably a little down the road, but uh, yeah, no, it's fun little, fun little experiment that we were doing. I encourage you strongly, Austin, Please add into your wine ensemble when you and Kristen begin your business, and I hope you call it a couple of grapes, uh, champagne, because I I'm either a vodka or champagne drinker if I'm if I'm gonna have a go to cocktail. Oh, we are obsessed with we love champagne too. It's just light, it's fun, it gets you gets you feeling good real quick, and yeah, so we definitely will do that. Vodka is too aggressive. We will not do that. <laughs> uh, 
Kristen's yeah, <laughs> Kristen's mom. That's her go-to drink, and yeah, we we can't do that at all. <laughs> we're uh we're a nice like glass of red on like a Friday night type. Yeah, I I say that because no matter what the wine may be, um, it just always makes me tired. Now, if I do champagne or vodka, like I can stay awake. But let's say if we're out to dinner, um, I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna want to go home and go to sleep. I just cannot. Uh, for some reason, stay uh, excited or hyper or wired or awake drinking any sort of wine. But I, I can get energy off of champagne and, and uh, vodka. Oh, yeah. No, if you're going to go out, out like, I don't know, a premiere or whatever, you're going to do tequila or, or vodka or something a little stronger. But, yeah, wine is more of a chill. And, yeah, watch uh, watch The Office or Ted Lasso and pet your cats type of thing, which is what we do pretty much every night. <laughs> Austin, I want to thank you for being with us today, live on air with Stephen Quirk on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Thank you to everyone for tuning in on the Alexa, the iOS and Android app, and all other platforms where you are listening to us 24-7, including our website, power985.com. Remember, you do not need to sign up for anything to download the app, to to listen to the station on Alexa or anywhere else where it streams lives on streaming.com, Stream Enter, Live Radio FM, uh, MindTuner, and more. Austin, who would you like to give a shout out to? Let's see. Um, I would love to give a shout out to my parents, uh, Darla and Justin. They're coming down from Napa, my hometown. Uh, right now, and they're going to visit me and my wife and our two cats in Marina Del Rey, because that's where we live now. Um, so yeah, they're coming down, they're going to visit us, and we're going to take them around and show them our lives down in LA, because they, um, yeah, they haven't been down here, so we're we're super excited for them to, them to come down. That's awesome. And go to, and I'm going to be honest, I did not look or to try to see if you were on TikTok, but what's the best go-to social media? Is it Instagram? I know you and I are connected on Instagram. Is it TikTok as well? Where would you like people to connect with you? Steven, I have uh, 23 followers on TikTok, and Do it's a you? picture of my cat is the profile picture. But I'm not, I'm not following anyone, so I have 23 followers, so that ratio is probably pretty incredible but uh and i've never <laughs> never posted one time and i don't plan to post ever on tiktok but uh oh wow are you verified <laughs> unless i make like a cat i should i'm not sure why i'm not verified with 23 followers but uh All yeah right. no hopefully one day i might make a cat <laughs> t tiktok pretty soon but uh yeah instagram uh austin aaron and then twitter is austin aaron too i those are the only two i use but uh and facebook occasionally when my uh my grandma posts something <laughs> oh. and sp here's the thing i don't know where other people stand it's it's going to be interesting to know your point of view austin um i don't utilize facebook the way i used to it's more like keeping people who don't want to be bothered with the other social media platforms uh yeah. that are still interested but um i don't know where social media is at today uh, just to find out from you um do you really have a lot of interest in it or do you feel like it's more it's it's better used for SEO purposes and just to do like a quick text or like a, a, a Twitter to say here, here's what's going on. This is what I'm doing. And you just go back to living your life. You know, you got to everything's good in moderation. So just just limit it as much as possible. I I like moving and like being out and everything. So. I try to not look at it as much as possible. However, it's very, very good business-wise. So there can be a lot, like over the pandemic when no actors were working and you know no jobs were available, I just started reaching out to brands and they would get back to me like, yeah, we would love to do a partnership. So that actually got me through the time by not quitting acting a few years ago when, uh, yeah, just reaching out on Instagram and being like, hey, you wanna pay me to post about your litter box? And they were like, sure. So. Yeah, no, a lot can be done. And then I actually met uh, Mark Landsberger, the actual guy that I play on uh, on the Lakers show. Um, he reached out on Facebook and he was like, hey, we lo would love to get in contact with you. So now we're really good friends and everything and pretty pretty damn cool. But um, yeah, definitely limit it as much as possible because there's not a lot of, there's some bad parts to it for sure. Well, you, you mentioned Facebook, so I'm shocked. See, if you weren't on Facebook, Maybe Mark would not have gotten a hold of you, but he picked Facebook as a way to get a hold of you. 
Yeah. He actually reached out to my wife and was like, hey, could you reach out to Austin? Seriously? <laughs> so, yeah, it was, it was great. Oh, um, wow. I switched. Yeah, no. So that's the good part of Facebook. And then, uh, you know, responding to your grandma's or uh, mom's, you know, posts that don't make a ton of sense or whatever. Those are fun. Fun to look at as well. Awesome. Well, grandma and Kristen and everyone else, uh, big shout out to your family, your wife. And uh, what are your cats' names? Winnie and Tigger. We're the biggest Disney fans ever. And uh, yeah, they're beautiful felines. They sleep with us on the bed every night. Beautiful cats. And I will be making their TikTok right when we get off the, the interview. <laughs> Seriously, do it. That would be awesome. And would you consider posting that on Instagram or no? Or at least Probably. an Instagram story. Yeah. I just, I just, TikTok, I don't want to make videos myself. I just like, it just doesn't feel right. But yeah, cats, I'll, I'll make as many videos. Those are the only videos I have on my phone are just cat videos running around and then just being felines. And yeah, so yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. I'm not saying this to be facetious, Austin, but you do that. I'm going to tell you those TikTok animal profiles watch. You're going to end up having a verified account and have 2 million <laughs> followers in 48 hours. Just how you draw it up. Better uh, than 23 followers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously. I mean, you're the next time you talk about your TikTok, you do that. It will not be a surprise. You get your account gets verified and you got 2 million followers in 48 hours. <laughs> that happens. Why it's not happening to my TikTok account. I have no idea, <laughs> but I am confident it will happen with yours. Great. I'm super <laughs> high, super high for that. All right, Austin. Thank you again. Is there anything you want to share before we close out? Um, yeah, be, uh, be nice and hug your parents. That's my, uh, my one message to the people, I guess. And, uh, yeah, have a great weekend. Thank you so much, Austin. Austin, we appreciate you. Thank you for being with us today on Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5. Yes, I caught that little tongue twister there. I'm having some coffee. I usually do beforehand, but now I'm having it taking a little bit of break, changing things up. And uh, I'm going to look more into that Zen diet. Maybe you should too. Um, talk to your dietitian, talk to your, you know, practitioner or whatever. If you're thinking about making changes, do it the healthy way. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend. I believe it's Friday coming up already. Remember this episode uh, with Austin Aaron is going to air 2 p.m. Eastern time. Power985.com. Friday, tomorrow, July 15th. And uh, we've also got Resilient You with Alicia Pizzoni, Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And then we're going to have Let Me Tell You with Lady T. She's still sorting out exactly what her topic point is going to be this week. She did have a special guest, but uh, we're going to be putting that on the following week. Um, who is an Olympian. So yeah, thank you for tuning us, tuning in with us and being with us today. Hope you have a great afternoon. Take it easy. Friend us on your socials and let's connect.